Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. Hall of Famer in our book. I don't care if he's retired or not. He's still the, one of the doggone best in the business, John McClain. John, great to have you back. Thanks, Steve. I'm not retired. Ah, yes. I've read, the, I've read your column, though. So it's great to have uh, you with us. I'm, I'm not writing for the Chronicle. I'm working five days a week for the Texans flagship radio station where I've been working for 22 years. And I do beautiful 10, 10 other shows in six cities. And I'm about to write for the station's website. Yeah, there you go. Great. Well, because we need you out there as often as we can get you. Well, thank you very uh, much, Dave. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, Deshaun Watson, you followed this closely. Uh, just obviously you've had to along the way. Uh, why any indication why two grand juries did not indict him, John? Yeah, because they may have thought he was guilty, but they didn't think they had enough evidence for the district attorney to prosecute. And one of the things that was very suspicious about the Harris County grand jury, they had eight women who accused Watson lined up to testify before the grand jury. And the assistant district attorney called one, and that was it. And then there was a lot of talk because she was tight with Rusty Harden, who worked in the district attorney's office for 15 years and represents Deshaun Watson. Of course, both sides denied it, but it was very suspicious when they're all there and you only ask one. And then the other county, Fort Bend County, they had one woman out there. But a lot of people think because a grand jury doesn't indict, they think a guy's innocent. No, that is far from the truth. So now we bring to what Sue Robinson, I believe the NFL had her look at five cases, I believe. I think that's the number. Uh, That's what they said, five cases. There were 25 women that sued him. There were 66 he had uh, massages with. We don't know how many of those could have been paid off before to keep them from filing civil suits like the others did. And uh, and if you read her decision, my goodness, she makes it sound so bad, and then all of a sudden, boom, she gives him only six games, the same number as DeAndre Hopkins got for trace, uh, trace amounts of a substance that's banned by the league, the same number Alvin Kamara got for getting in a fight at the Pro Bowl, and less than some other players have gotten. It just makes no sense. All right. So now you look now the Goodell has to now make a decision. Uh and this is all gonna be guesswork. What does he need to do here? The way the process is set up, um, the league can appeal. The league can stand by her decisions, and I've been looking at everything I can on social media all day, and the league is, she's getting murdered on social media, not just by women, but by guys, and I'm talking about media people, uh, pro football talk, had a survey it put up this morning, and it's overwhelmingly against the decision, saying it's too light, and the NFL knows they keep track of public opinion. That's why I'll be surprised, Steve, if Cadell doesn't knock it up about eight games. I thought for the longest time it might be this season because this Watson situation is unprecedented in the history of sports at any level. And the judge, former retired judge Sue Robinson, just tore him up one side and down the other, said he could never go to another individual therapist, massage therapist, it's got to be the team, and let him off what a lot of people think is lightly. But right now, if Roger Goodell wanted to make it 8 p.m. the season, him or someone he designates, but obviously that designee is going to do what Goodell wants. Then Watson's people could sue in federal court. And history shows the federal court is looking at the real world, not sports, and they will fall back on the collective bargaining agreement. And the players gave Goodell uh, permission to operate this way. So if you don't like it, don't agree to it. They did, so it'll stand. All right, so that then brings us to the Players Association. I think they, if I recall correctly, John, 
they their their point was none and then they said i believe last night that they would abide by whatever she said uh so what about you know you mentioned their their role they'll be vocal about it if the commissioner gets involved so what what do you think their stance is going to be well they better not get be too vocal about it cuz they may one of the, they may go have other players in front of Goodell, and I think if they sue and want to make it ugly, and the only ones that benefit that are the lawyers who make millions more. There's been estimates that this has cost Watson about five million, and I don't think that's counting the settlements. But when you make two hundred thirty million guaranteed, you made ten point five four million the year before, and you made twenty seven million. Uh, in September of that year when you sign your new contract with Texans, he's not going to the poorhouse. And uh, so the Goodell's, if Goodell increases it, I'm guessing if he goes to eight games, they're not going to sue. I think if he goes over 10, then they're going to sue. Right, okay. Uh, so, you know, John, you've been around players for a long time. We all know that everybody has their team around them. Even a professional golfer has a team around them, a nutritionist, and right, a therapist, whatever it may be. That's why you sit back and you, you see 25, whatever the number is. You're like, okay, most most guys will let a person do that. And in terms of, like, being their, quote, therapist, I mean, what kind of red flag did it send up that was 25? Well, it, and, and I read every lawsuit multiple times. And the charges in the civil suits were disgusting. Well, yeah. And all of them told a similar story about what he wanted and what he did. And I know when this first broke in March of last year, when he tweeted about a lawyer and a woman trying to get money from him, I'm like, what? And then when the lawsuits started to pile up, I'm like, Deshaun Watson, what? You know, if you'd told me pick 25 players who'd be doing this, he wouldn't be in my list of 25. He kept right. everything to himself. So, you know, the bottom line is the Browns made this deal because they know at some point it's going to be over and it'll be a great quarterback. The key is, say it's six games and the first game is back are the Ravens and the Bengals, and Browns fans will get all fired up that Watson will beat two division rivals. That wouldn't be fair. He hadn't played since the last game of the 2020 season. So to expect him to come off a suspension, he might not even start the first game because he would have been. When you're suspended, you can't go to the facility. The last right. time you can go to the facility is during training camp and before the first week of uh, the season. So it'd be kind of ridiculous to expect to him to ride in on a white horse, step in and beat the Ravens and Bengals back to back because he's going to have some cobwebs. No question. But in Cleveland, where they've been desperate for for a winner, anything he does, they're going to be going for. Um, so, w- the Texans and their culpability in this, as you've covered it, I know, I believe they've settled with some people along the way. What about their culpability? Well, first of all, uh, the exclusive hotel here, where a lot of our star athletes, owners, general managers, called the Houstonian, where they have memberships. Uh, Watson wanted membership, so they had a person in the organization go over there and set this up for him. And then he asked him for a massage table. They didn't know what he was doing. If they knew what he was doing, they wouldn't have. They would have had him stop. And uh, but they settled because they wanted it to go away. And yes. because if they hadn't settled, it'd still be dragging out. And they want to focus on football. Watson could have settled this for a million dollars. Uh, in March or April of last year and made it all go away and whoever advised him not to do it I'm hoping he's not still that person's not still on his team Tell us about Rusty Harden He's one of the best uh, attorneys in the country I think he's 80 he used to be in the prosecutor's office he's represented a lot of star athletes through the decades and if you got money and you need to be defended, you call Rusty Harden, and right away you got to write him a check for a million. What has this been like for you to cover this, somebody who loves football and loves sports? I mean, we could talk about any sport, and you've covered them all in the course of your lifetime career. What's it like for you to have to try and, you know, I mean, as a professional you have to do it, but, like, that, like how tough is this to do it? 
not tough. It's just that uh, it takes every talk show I've done going back to March of last year, and I do a lot of talk shows besides my weekly 10 in 6 cities. Every I've talked about Watson. I wrote about him so many times, but every time I wrote columns about him, it'd be the number one uh, thing on Houston Chronicle's site. And everybody just wanted to be traded. And when he's traded, you knew the next thing was going to be a daily story uh, leading up to suspension. And as you can imagine, it's a huge story here, too. Now everybody waits to see what Goodell's going to do. And at some point, he'll just run off into the sunset, and we won't hear from him again until the suspension is over. And a lot of people will be glad because they're tired of covering the story. Can can the NFL take a stance of Sue Robinson made the decision and that's it? Can they take that stance logically? They can do they can do anything they want. The NFL is the is making billions and billions and billions of dollars. They can do anything they want. Every franchise is worth multiple billions of dollars. They can take some arrows. They know people are gonna be sending those arrows their way. So, yes, they're they're almost – they're not Teflon because they do get criticized, but nothing sticks because the NFL is so popular. I mean, you've got a player out for a year on betting. You had another player as a quarterback on footballs out for four games. And then you got – I mean, there's a long list, like you pointed out, where this doesn't make sense. I mean, do, when you read what she wrote, did any of it make sense? Well, all the first part of it did until I got down to the suspension. You know, it's funny, baseball trading deadlines tomorrow, as you know. Yankees acquired starter Frankie Montas and relief, relief pitcher Lou Trevino from the A's, and everybody's right. talking about Deshaun Watson. All this publicity, it's negative about Watson, but it still keeps the NFL in the spotlight ahead of baseball, which is struggling, just had his lowest-rated all-star game in history. And no matter what baseball and the NBA do, you know, they're pimple on an elephant's butt when it comes to the NFL, even if it's negative or positive. Because, obviously, the Astros have a real shot in all of this. And when they played the Yankees, they played them really well, yet they probably can't get, get out of their own way because of this story, right? Well, that's fine with them. they got the Red Sox in here. The Astros have the third-best record in baseball. They've beaten the Yankees. Mm-hmm. They're 5-2 and two against the Yankees. They have one more series against them. The Yankees have traded for Andrew Benatendi, now Montas, now Trevino, and I guess that means they think they're going to beat the Astros, and they may. They very well may. Astros traded for outfielder Trey Mancini from Baltimore with more to come. I love the trading deadline at baseball, Steve. It's yeah. so exciting so compared to the NFL, which is usually boring, even though they almost traded Watson to the Dolphins last year right before the trading deadline, but Watson waited too late to try to settle. Wow. Yeah, you're right. It's much. I, I remember the night that Dickerson got traded by the Rams or the Colts. Like, what, there was a trade in the midseason in the NFL, right? Meanwhile, in baseball, it used to be, what, June 15th, then July 15th. Now it's what, going to be August 2nd. There's always been excitement about the baseball trade deadline. There always has been, and, and there's so many great deals. And now teams that are close, and with more teams making the playoffs, yeah. you've got a chance, so you've got to go all in to try to show your fans, yeah, we do have a shot at that last wild card. So uh, I'm really, really excited. I'm a big baseball fan, big Astros yeah. fan, since their first season in 1962, and I watch every one of their games. And uh, – I think this is just a great time of year for baseball. So, John, let's make a deal. Next time you come on, let's just talk sports. <laughs> I'd love that, Steve. The next time I come on, I may have a new uh, place I'm working that you can help me promote. You got it. That is a deal. More Steve, than happy thank to you do very that. much. John, thank you. Anytime. <laughs>